All right, it is pretty, but it is a serious problem in the Washington, D.C. area. A couple inches of snow. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but in D.C., that is more than enough to slow things down and cause cancellations. One event that had to be rescheduled until tomorrow, a photo op with House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and the 65 Democratic women members of the House. That number includes three non-voting delegates. That's the largest number of female members in a party caucus ever. Today is a day for the Republican Party. They are taking control of both houses of Congress. So everybody in the party should be perfectly happy, right? Well, not so much. House Speaker John Boehner is facing a challenge to his leadership from a small group of conservative lawmakers. Right now, numbers about 12, 13, depending on who you ask. They say they may have more on the way. They will vote later today on the House floor. They say they are going to try to block John Boehner from becoming the Speaker once again. If they manage to get 29 members to vote against him, they could force a second ballot, which would be hugely embarrassing. Now, most people don't think they can reach that number, but even if they get close, it will be very, very embarrassing, as I said, for the Speaker. Let's talk more about this. I want to bring in Tara Setmeyer. She's a Republican strategist, and Stephanie Cutter, a Democratic strategist. And Tara, I, I want to start with you here. You know, there haven't been this many Republicans in the House since Harry Truman was president, or maybe even Herbert Hoover. It's been a long time, since a little bit before I was born. That's the important <laughs> thing to know here. So why shake things up? If you're one of these 12 or 13 House members, why not just take the victory lap, elect Speaker Boehner, get on with the business? Well, I think it's more than just that. I mean, it's more than just 12 or 13. There are a couple dozen members of the House who are not thrilled with Boehner's leadership. They feel as though he sold out to the establishment, uh, particularly lately with what he did with the omnibus bill, uh, you know, funding the government through September, basically giving the president everything he wanted. He didn't push back hard enough on the immigration executive orders. So there are people who have been very upset with Boehner's leadership for a while. Now, how many of them actually step up to the plate and vote against him? That's a different ballgame because he is speaker. He does wield a lot of power. Uh, committee assignments and things like that are up for grabs, and you have a lot of freshmen coming in who, um, you know, they may talk tough on the campaign trail, but when it comes down to it, they want those plush committee assignments. Um, you know, it's a management game. So, you know, I think this is not a good sign for Boehner. This is, this is a distraction for the party. They should be unified. We need to come in, and the, the American people sent a, a message and a mandate to the Republican Congress that they reject the Obama policies, they rejected what the Democrats were doing, and they want the, the Republicans to govern and get things done. So when, once we get past this, I think then the onus comes on to whether they can govern and get some things done and send some bills over to the president's desk, and then it's up to him whether he wants to veto them or not. So, Stephanie, I'm sure you're watching this with a certain amount of satisfaction faction as Republicans are engaged in a certain level of infighting. But before you gloat too much, let me remind you that, that Harry Reid, the, I should say, incoming Senate minority leader, he had senators vote against him in the party caucus. He had mm -hmm. Democratic candidates running against him last fall. Isn't this just democracy at work? It, it is democracy at work. And actually, I'm not looking at this with satisfaction because what this ultimately means is that John Boehner will be less open to compromise, less open to actually as Tara said, governing. And governing means getting something actually done, signed into law, not just sending the president message bills for the sake of strengthening their own party. So John Boehner over the past uh, several years has been held hostage by this same group of Tea Party Republicans in the House. As a result, we had a government shutdown, uh, we had a default, uh, uh, a downgrade in our credit rating, and Congress, ba uh, Congress basically shut down, got nothing done. Um, so the strength of this Tea Party faction group in the House is very concerning to all parties involved, not just John Boehner. It's more than just about his speakership, it's about our ability to compromise. Well, the government didn't shut down because of conservative and things didn't get done because you had an obstructionist Harry Reid in the Senate that would allow every bill to die and not allow any votes to come up per the White House. So uh, we're not going to have that anymore because Harry Reid no longer has that job. Mitch McConnell does. So it's going to be a whole new, uh, whole new ball game when it comes to actually passing bills and getting them to the president's Let's desk. let them settle that in Washington over the next couple days and weeks as they head into this new Congress. Let me ask you a question about 2016. Jeb? Bush, the former governor of Florida, he has set up as of a few minutes ago a new leadership pack, the Right to Rise pack. This will let him raise money, uh, 
for you know to travel around the country and support other candidates and build up political favors. He's also asking for people to send him their Instagram addresses, and he's now got a big Instagram account. Stephanie Cutter, uh, aside from partisanship here, as a political mm -hmm. operative, are you impressed, or what do you make of the steps that Jeb Bush keeps on taking here? Well, he's certainly doing it with a lot of energy and uh, doing it in all the right ways, step by step, being extremely transparent about his record as governor in Florida. Now, we might disagree about whether uh, there are things in that record uh, that could be disqualifying, but he is taking all of the right steps to prepare himself for a pretty aggressive and competitive run for the Republican nomination. Tara, you know, he's making a big deal out of setting up this Instagram account. Is setting up an Instagram account enough to, to get the kids involved? I mean, should he be doing Snapchat? Isn't there some well. WhatsApp thing? I mean, are they even using Instagram anymore? Well, no. I mean, Instagram is still in. It's just, it's funny to me to watch this. I mean, I lived in Washington for 20 years, and I've seen many, many incarnations of different campaign strategies. And it's about time that Republicans got with it as far as the technology and, and being tech savvy is concerned. So I'm glad to see that. But what Jeb Bush is doing is he's basically putting a stake in the fundraising game early on. He is the establishment favorite and by setting up this pack it is letting the other members know I'm going to raise money from big donors and I'm staking my claim. He's already he already has fundraisers set up in New York, Washington and Florida Connecticut. and that's in Connecticut where there's a lot of money there. I hear. So this is this is what <laughs> so this is what he's doing and he's he, this is the typical step-by-step -step process for he's absolutely absolutely going to run for president. I mean, it's not speculative anymore, let's be honest here. So this is just one of many steps. I'm, I assume the announcement will come sooner than later. Sure, looks like he is. Right, Tara Setmeyer, Stephanie Cutter, thanks so much for being with us. Let's go Thank you. to Capitol Hill because we have a member of the new incoming Congress standing by with CNN's chief congressional correspondent.